previously on Hoagies and Pierogies. Uh, Missouri, Texas. Oh, sorry. Missouri, Texas A&M, not Missouri and Texas. That looks like a pretty good ranked on ranked matchup there. And in fact, is the only ranked on ranked matchup next week. So not a lot of excitement. We got Michigan facing off against Washington in a rematch of the uh, college football championship last year. See if Washington can do anything. I really don't think they can. <laughs> they just lost to Rutgers. But yeah, all right. Is that it for college football? Oh man. Yeah, I, I do think that's it. Seems like it's going to be a slow, slow Saturday. This may have very well been the craziest week of baseball and football in the history of this podcast. Let's go over the absolute zaniness. Episode 122 of Hoagies and Pierogies coming at you like Hurricane Milton. Live from central Pennsylvania with your host Ian DiCarlo, this is Hoagies and Pierogies. The ski stash! The ski stash! Welcome to the Big Ten. Beijers go with Drake Bay. Let's go. All right, let's go over playoff baseball first. Last week when we recorded, they were just first getting into it. It was the first day of the wild card round. And to be honest with you, the wild card round was kind of ass. The Padres swept the Braves. The uh, Tigers swept the Astros. The Royals swept the Orioles who got swept in the wild card round for the second time in two years. What do you do in Orioles? The only series that was competitive at all that went to game three was the Mets Brewer series, which the Mets really cannot escape OMG moments. And I don't know whether that's for better or for worse. <laughs> I would rather skip the heart attack and them just win. But yeah, Alonzo had a three run home run off of Devin Williams airbender in the ninth inning of game three down 2-0. And Marte slapped home another run for them to take the game four to two, and the series two to one. The wild card round, not that great. The divisional round, however, at one point every single series was tied one to one. But after Tuesday, the Padres and Mets have two to one leads. The Tigers are currently up on the Guardians two to zero in Game Three, and then we'll check back. Uh, with that one at the end of the episode. So the divisional round started on Saturday, and there was other stuff going on on Saturday, so I kind of didn't tune into the baseball games. So in these divisional rounds, we got matchups of the Tigers-Guardians, AL Central matchup. We got Mets-Phillies, NL East matchup. (laughs) Padres-Dodgers, NL West matchup. And then we got the odd one out here, which is the Royals-Yankees. So all, like I said, are tied, we're tied at 1-1. And all of them are really good series. The Phillies are kind of getting a little bit uh, blown out in their losses, though. They lost 6-2 to in the first game. They won game two because they came back to win it uh, 7-6, to I believe. Yeah, they came back to win it 7-6. to And then last night, they got blown out again 7-2. to So, man, it's really painful. Really, really painful to see Starling Marte come in and have uh, hits in the postseason and clutch moments. God damn it. (laughs) In game two for the Tigers, Tarek Skubal shoved. It's the magic pumpkin seed. So on Sunday, the Padres, you know, kind of blew out the Dodgers. The big thing that came out of that game, instead of, you know, anything good about the Padres winning 10 to 2, The whole big story was about Manny Machado throwing a ball a little bit harder than normal at the dugout. When people were commenting on this in the timeline, dude, I thought he whipped the ball like he was trying to throw out Ellie De La Cruz at first. I thought he whipped that thing into the Dodgers dugout. But no, (laughs) he barely threw that thing and it was in no way, shape, or form meant to injure anyone. That's like how we would throw it to the ball boy waiting on the top step. It was a little bit harder. It was just a little bit. But it was clear that there was no intent behind it, and it was a bouncer to the dugout. If he really wanted to throw it, he could have whipped it with no bounce at all. Dave Roberts claimed this incident to be unsettling. (laughs) What? He says, there is intent behind it. It didn't almost hit me because there was a net. So if the netting wasn't there, it would have almost hit you and not hit you? Dave Roberts, what, what are we talking about here? What are you doing? And there was a whole bunch of talking back and forth between Jack Flaherty and Manny Machado during the game after that happened. And 
Flaherty was like, we saw that. We saw that. We saw what you were trying to do. <laughs> and Machado was just like, all right, do you want to take this outside? I will fight you. Um, Has anyone seen Fernando Tatis Jr. and Jordan Love in the same room? Just asking. So tonight, all four series are going. Like I said, the Mets took a 2-1 series lead on the Phillies, and the Padres took a 2-1 series lead on the Dodgers. So let's go to Wednesday here. Todd, uh, the Tigers are still up 2-0 on the Guardians. The Mets-Phillies game is about to start. The Yankees and Royals play tonight. They're back in Kansas City. And then the Dodgers and Padres play game four at the Padres with the chance for the Padres to take the series. And Dylan Cease is starting for the Padres. And the uh, Dodgers are still undecided as to who their starter is going to be. So that's a little bit worrying if I'm a Dodgers fan. And I swear to God, baseball is the only sport where there's a real contingent of people that are pissed off that the number one seeds aren't making it past the divisional round and blaming it on five days of rest. That is unreal. <laughs> that sounds like a number one seed problem and not a problem for MLB to fix. Oh, boo-hoo, I got five days rest and I can't hit anymore. What the hell? Come on. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, those series. Hopefully, you know what, even though RJ isn't here anymore, I'm still rooting for the Phillies a little bit. So I hope the Phillies can come back and push it to game five. Let's get into some college football. It, it, this was absolute madness. Another Friday night, another great game. Oh, my God. Syracuse pulls off the, you know, quote-unquote upset and beats number 25 UNLV in overtime, 44-41. to 41. Uh, I, Like I said, when they beat Georgia Tech, this Syracuse team feels Different with Kyle McCord slanging it back there. 40 for 63 <laughs> with 355 yards and three touchdowns. And actually, I didn't even realize until I was looking it up yesterday that UNLV and Texas A&M were tied for number 25 in the AP poll with 122 points each. So they are actually 26 ranked teams. Uh, I didn't even know that was possible, to be honest with you. But being ranked did not work out in anyone's favor. <laughs> Seven out of 18 ranked teams took the uh, loss that played this weekend. Uh, let's start out with number one, shall we? After all that Bama went through last week, for to hold off Georgia from having one of the most historic comebacks in college football history, they go out and blow the game against Vanderbilt. Are you kidding me? <laughs> 40 to 35, Vanderbilt carries the goalposts all the way to the river, just like how Tennessee did after they beat Alabama two years ago. What in the world was going on? Milro actually played decently. He had he was 18 for 24, 310 yards and a touchdown, and only one interception. Pavia came in. Diego Pavia, 16 for 20, 252 yards and a touchdown. Was running the triple option perfectly. It, <laughs> it, it, Alabama had no idea where that ball was going to end up going, or who the ball, who was going to end up carrying that ball. That was awesome. <laughs> Pavia after the game was like, first off, this one's because of God. All thanks to God. Vanderbilt, we fucking lit." <laughs> Just going from all that God talk, thank God, to let's fucking go, <laughs> was hilarious. <laughs> Ryan Williams even still had a good game, too. Still putting on the moves. Three receptions, 82 yards, and touchdown. I mean, what can't the kid do? Uh, come back against Vanderbilt, apparently. <laughs> oh, and I think this storming the field fine is bullshit. Vanderbilt has to pay $100,000 to Alabama now? What? That doesn't make any sense for storming their own field. Bullshit. Get out of here with that. Okay, Texas had a bye. They were super lucky to have a bye. Uh, Ohio State took care of Iowa 35-7. to No issues there. But then this game, my buddy's dad called it out in the group chat. He was like, Arkansas, put it down. I did not believe him at all. Oh my god, what the hell happened? I didn't really watch it because it was on pretty damn late. Tennessee lost. 19 to 14 to Arkansas. The Arkansas that let Oklahoma State come back against him. What the hell? What is going on? This was madness. Madness. I am Aliava only had 158 yards 
and was 17 for 29 passing. No touchdowns, no interceptions, but what, what can he do? Jesus Christ, their running back had 138 yards and two touchdowns on 22 carries. Their leading receiver had one catch for 42 yards. Tennessee, what are you doing? <laughs> I believed in them. I, they were going to be my fallback plan for Ole Miss. But my God, they just couldn't get anything going. That was awful. Uh, Georgia took care of business against Auburn, but they had to score 10 points in the fourth quarter to do it. They were kind of, again, starting out really slow. Uh, Miami stormed back and scored 21 points in the fourth quarter to beat Cal, 39-38. to They were down 35-18 to in the fo- going into the fourth quarter, and they came all the way back and won 39-38. Holy shit. Cam Ward, 35 for 53, 437 yards and two touchdowns. Oh, Jesus Christ. And this was actually cool. Uh, game day was at Cal for the first time ever. And I really like these these kicks, especially this week, because in addition to donating $500,000 to the Hurricane Relief Fund, they gave this kid another chance, bumped the total winnings up from 75000 to 100000 and Pat McAfee was like, uh, we're going to give the Hurricane Relief Fund another 100000 if you make this kick. And what do you know? He made it in some loafers <laughs> and just some slip-on old bands. He made the 30-yard field goal. That was impressive. Good on ESPN for doing that, too. Number nine, Missouri goes down and gets pummeled by Texas A&M. 41-10, they lost. Oh, my God. Wagman was looking great, 18 for 22, uh, 276 yards. The uh, Missouri defense, which was really good, shut out their first two opponents of the season. Like I said, albeit bad opponents, they were the only ranked team to do that. How... They lost 41 to 10. Everything was going wrong for them. From the moment the opening drive ended, when that uh, pass interference was called back, they picked up the flag on an obvious pass interference for Texas A&M. They, <laughs> it was just downhill from there for them. It was, I guess, uphill. It was just up, an uphill battle from there for them. So number nine goes down to the second number 25 on the week. (laughs) At least one number 25 team won. Then we go to number 10, Michigan. They lost 27 to 17 to Washington, who just lost to Rutgers. (laughs) Rutgers seems like the best team in the country all of a sudden. I don't know. I feel like Michigan could feel this coming a little bit, especially after losing to USC and then almost letting Minnesota come back against them last week. It's just about time, I guess. Washington did end up getting revenge for that college football championship. Okay, this one, like I just said, Minnesota almost came back and beat Michigan last week. I should have seen this one coming. Minnesota upsets USC 24-17. to Down goes number 11. All right, and I was really worried about this game. Ole Miss comes back, takes care of business this week. Beats Carolina, South Carolina 27-3. to Eight and a half point cover. They were only favored by eight and a half points. So, like I said, Ole Miss, I'll keep your eye on you. Maybe that game against Kentucky was just a fluke. We'll see. Clemson took care of business 29-13 against Florida State. I'm surprised Florida State even scored 13 points. Boise State put up 62 points. Ashton Gent, he had 186 yards and three touchdowns. <laughs> and then the last ranked team that lost this week was Louisville. Notre Dame just broke them. SMU won 34 to 27, then Indiana won 41 24. So, yeah, seven, like I said, seven out of the 18 ranked teams that played this weekend lost. It, it just mass chaos. I was not expecting this at all. I said last week, oh, it's going to be a quiet Saturday. There's going to be nothing going on. Well, you know, we're in store for just a nice nap time Saturday. Nope. <laughs> Absolute chaos. <laughs> Let's go over this AP poll here. Texas, obviously back up to number one. I don't think they should have moved out of number one last week in the first place. Ohio State up one. Now this, this is where it gets a little bit odd to me. Oregon up to number three. They jump Georgia. Penn State up to number four. They also jump Georgia. Georgia stays, uh, stays put at number five. Miami goes up two spots to number six. This next one is egregious. Alabama at number seven. 
after just losing to unranked Vanderbilt, losing to two and two Vanderbilt. You're telling me they didn't drop out of the top 10. Are you kidding me? They moved down six spots. You all miss moved down six spots for losing to Kentucky and Kentucky is, I would probably say better than Vanderbilt. The just obvious bias towards Alabama here is staggering. What What's going on? Hey, people, what are you doing? This one also, Tennessee only down four to number eight after losing to unranked Arkansas. What are we doing? If you are in the top 10 and you lose to an unranked team, you should, no matter where you are in that top 10, move out of the top 10. I mean, that should just be a given. What's he? <laughs> This is insane, too. And, it, I mean, it, it'll get crazier when NFL comes. So, the craziest will has not stopped. Ole Miss up three to number nine. Clemson up five to number ten. For beating Florida State, that one's kind of weird. Notre Dame up three to number 11. And they're actually tied here at number 11 with Iowa State. We have another tie. When the, When is the last time that happened? I don't even remember a tie happening. <laughs> I, well, actually, that's not true. I... I'm pretty sure I do remember a tie, but that's when I was little and I thought I didn't know what was going on. So I thought it was just a mistake or they were in a different conference or whatever. Tied for number 11. That's kind of crazy, which puts LSU at number 13. So if you're tied for 25th, you know, they can't get rid of 24. They would just be tied at 24. So that's why there are only going to be 25 ranked teams this week. LSU 13, BYU 14 up number up. T- three spots texas a&m up 10 up 10 for beating missouri blowing out missouri yes okay i'll give that to them but what texas a&m is not that good they're not they lost to notre dame week one they're just not that good i think i really don't think you know what out of this whole top 15 here who do i think is real uh texas maybe i don't even think ohio state is that great they've been having some slow starts texas is probably the best team i mean even though they lost quinn ewers they are now with arch bandit who is doing great so we'll we'll see how he does against oklahoma red river rivalry let's go and then we'll also see we'll get into it in the preview but ohio state plays oregon next week two against three oh my god i just don't think there's a dominant team this year which is good for the parody of the uh of the i'll keep wanting to say league is good for the landscape of college football all right utah up to boise state up four kansas state up to missouri down 12 to number 21 see like and i know again yes missouri got blown out but missouri got beat by a ranked team and got moved down 12 spots alabama got beat by an unranked team even though it ended up being close i mean it it wasn't even five points close. That like that touchdown was just a garbage time touchdown for Alabama. It was clear at that point that they were going to lose. So what what's going on here? Why did they only move down six and Mizzou drops down 12? The bias against Mizzou specifically is very weird. I don't get that at all. And another... Uh, <laughs> People have actually been pretty happy with the AP poll rankings like on Twitter and everything. But this week, people were like, oh, why is Alabama below Georgia? Why aren't they further below Georgia? Are you kidding me? Georgia has a better loss, but Alabama still beat them. So Alabama should be ranked ahead. They should move Georgia down five spots. So they're (laughs) like, what? That logic makes no sense at all. It it makes zero sense. Alabama just lost to unranked Vanderbilt. Of course, they're going to be lower than Georgia. Come on. Simple math. Oh, and then Michigan down 14 spots to number 24. Michigan lost to an unranked team. They went down 14 spots. They played them close. I mean, it was 27-17, 10 points. That's not that much. Hey, people, you're losing your mind a little bit. Quit sucking Alabama's dick. Let's get into the week. Oh, Jesus Christ. Week 7 preview. It, It is week 7 already, folks. Okay, we got Utah, Arizona State on Friday night. Hopefully that one will be good too. It's the only game on Friday. So I am a little bit worried about this game for Penn State. Penn State has to go to USC who did just drop out of the top 25. So they are unranked. 
But going uh, going to Pasadena, I don't know. It's going to be tough. Going cross country, it's ah, uh, Jesus. I don't know. This one, ah, uh, this one's a toss up for me. Penn State's favored by five points right now, over under 50 and a half. But uh, it might be pretty close. I might take USC money line just for the hell of it. Uh, Alabama plays South Carolina. Look out. Look out, Alabama. Might lose again. Clemson plays Wake Forest. Missouri plays Massachusetts. Blah, blah, blah. Texas, Oklahoma is a good ranked matchup next week. Florida plays Tennessee. Ole Miss plays LSU. That'll be a good game at LSU. And then the big one, like I said earlier, 730. Make room on your calendars. Make sure you got nothing else going on. We got number two Ohio State against number three Oregon. For the second time in three weeks, we have a top five matchup. And it, oh, baby, it feels good. <laughs> this is going to be a great game. Ohio State's favored by three points, even though they're in Oregon. So, oh, man, I'm excited for it. I don't know if it can live up to last week, but this is going to be a great week of ranked games. <laughs> so, we'll see. Oh, last thing I wanted to talk about about football, <laughs> or about college football. Uh, the South Carolina player flagged for unloading the clip into Jackson Dart. It's about damn time. <laughs> like, what? I was shocked the first time I saw a gun celebration. At, I'm pretty sure it was last year where they're just like, you know, bah, bah, bah. like, eh, that's a little bit, uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous, and honestly, what it stands for is horrifically violent for being such a normalized way to signify a good play. Uh, bring back the good old days of Larry Foote pretending like he was curb stomping motherfuckers after a sack. <laughs> Hell, even OBJ taking a piss like a dog is more tasteful than pretending to murder someone in broad daylight on national television. That's my old man opinion for the week. <laughs> okay, let's go over the NFL here. <sighs> And this week, I mean, let's just start at the beginning of the week. Should have known that this was also going to be a crazy week for NFL. Kirk Cousins threw for 509 yards on Thursday night football to beat the Buccaneers in overtime, 36 to 30. And guess how many of those passing yards went to B. John Robinson? 16. 16 of those 509 passing yards went to B. John. And B. John ended up with 10 points. I'm getting real close to benching Bijan. I mean, Brian Robinson had 13. Ramondre had 19 this this week. Uh, better start doing something, Bijan. I'm getting a little bit impatient with you. It's week. It's gonna be week six next week already. Come on, let's go. You know what? Let's before we get into the Patriots because we do have a lot to go over with the Patriots this week. The Jets said, so long, see you later. The Jets fired Robert Sala after losing to the uh, Vikings 23-17 to in a game in which Brees Hall had, let me, let me check here, nine carries for 23 yards. He had three three fantasy points because he had one catch for no, no gain. I don't know what the fuck is going on with this Jets team, but hopefully it's just a coaching issue because... I mean, you have all of the talent there. You got Rodgers. You got Garrett Wilson. You got Brees Hall. You beefed up your offensive line this offseason. You got uh, Mike Williams. I, I just don't understand. And uh, hold up. Mina Kimes, them trading for Devontae Adams will not make them a Super Bowl contender. I don't know if they'll even make the playoffs right now. If they won't even make the playoffs, they're not going to win the Super Bowl with Devontae Adams. Come on. W what are we doing here? If your team is bad without a quarter, like last year, everyone was like, oh, I wish we had Aaron Rodgers. We would definitely make the playoffs with Rodgers. Are you sure? You might not make the playoffs with him this year. Be a little bit more realistic, Jets fans. All right. Uh, what what other games did I want to go over here? Bears. Bears destroyed the Panthers 36-10. to And Caleb Williams starting to heat up a little bit. 20 for 29, 304 yards, two touchdowns. First uh, game with over 300 yards passing. And DJ Moore was looking great. He was connected on some deep throws. Oh, this was a really exciting game. Ravens beat the Bengals 41-38 to in overtime. After the Bengals just 
pissed the game away up by 10 with eight minutes left well almost nine minutes left to go 38 28 it only took three and a half minutes for Lamar to drive the team down the field and throw a touchdown pass to Isaiah Likely. And then Justin Tucker hit a 56-yard field goal with a minute 35 left to uh, send the game to overtime. So <laughs> I don't know what the Bengals are doing. They are 1-4, and four, and Joe Burrow is like first in a bunch of categories. And this one is not on Joe Burrow. And Lamar had like 37 fantasy points. Let's go. Huge part of the reason I won this week. Commanders continue to roll 34-13 against the Browns, in which it, it looked like Deshaun Watson just completely quit on his team. But I guess that's not exactly what happened. Ian Rappaport said something. Okay, happy birthday, Trevor Lawrence. Oh, my God. 28 for 34, 371 yards and two touchdowns. The Jaguars got their first win at home, 37-34, to to move the 1-4. and four. Tied for the worst record in the league with one, the Patriots, and two of the Bengals. <laughs> the Texans beat the Bills 23 to 20, in which, man, uh, that Texans defense is legit. They held Josh Allen to 9 of 30 with 131 yards and a touchdown. You know, that doesn't bode well for the Patriots next week. And we'll talk about why here in a second. Cardinals beat the 49ers, and the 49ers are 2 and 3. Uh oh. Packers beat the Rams. Giants beat the Seahawks 29-20. to And then this one, I thought this one was interesting. Cowboys beat the Steelers. Now, Dak has become the first quarterback ever to throw one touchdown to one interception on back-to-back days. I guess that's why they're paying him $60 million a year. <laughs> yeah, the game was delayed until almost 10 o'clock. The game did not start till almost 10 o'clock because of weather. I don't know what kind of weather it was was going on in Pittsburgh. It must have been bad for them to delay the game by over an hour. So the game didn't end till almost 1 o'clock. <laughs> so that's why Dak had a touchdown and an interception on two different days. And then to round out the week, the Chiefs beat the Saints 26-13, to in which Rashid Shaheed basically won me the week, but he might have to hit the bench if uh, – Derek Carr is not the quarterback. But I'm telling you what, if Spencer Rattler is the quarterback, I'm keeping him in. Let's go. Spencer Rattler, it's your time to shine. Come on. Okay. Now, a lot of the craziness in the NFL this week focuses on the Patriots. It was announced yesterday, today officially, today's Wednesday, that Drake May will make his first NFL start against the Texans. It's going to be May. Oh no. Okay. First off, I would like to address all of the, all of the fans that are saying Mayo should be fired. Excuse me, give him a fucking chance. What did you want him to do in this situation? Oh, well, look at Caleb Williams. He was sacked a lot to start the year. Now he's better. What about Bo Nix? Caleb Williams has an actual offensive line. You know, one they used a first round pick on the year prior and made some free agent additions. And Bo Nix is being carried by his defense while he's arguing with Sean Payton on the sideline. You could not start Drake May week one because you had no idea what the O-line was going to look like in real game action. Uh, Should he have started against the Dolphins last week? In hindsight, yes. The O-line actually played half decently the past two weeks. But now you know. You know since you lost to the Dolphins that Brissett was the big issue and needed to be removed. There were so many... uh, Every... uh, Every pass. I wanted to say every other pass, but it was like every pass. He would go to throw the ball and not pump fake, second guess himself and bring it back in. He was he had absolutely no confidence in himself. I, I do believe Drake May would make a lot of those throws and probably would put that ball on the money to Jalen Polk in the back of the end zone for them to win that game. So, I, dude, I, I mean, what... If the Patriots won that game against the Dolphins, Brissett, Brissett would still be starting against the Texans. But now that you know he couldn't complete that game-winning drive, it's obviously him. The offense only scored 10 points. It was pretty fucking bad. Um, I thought the Dolphins would have a field day passing with Duggar and uh, Peppers out, but Gonzo stepped it up, uh, holding Tyreek Hill to six catches with 69 yards. 
It had a great diving interception. Uh, but speaking of Jabril Peppers, Peppers allegedly probably done it. Hit and choked his girlfriend at least six times and smashed her head against the wall. Holy shit. Uh, police also found cocaine in his wallet after he told the police that he needed to go back up and get said wallet to take a bump real quick. Uh, the 34-year-old North Andover woman says the two have been seeing each other off and on for three years. She says Peppers got mad after someone called her during sex. Peppers told police a different story, saying he told her to leave after she tried to have sex without a condom, and then she fell down the stairs because she was drunk. Now we know he's lying. Uh, you're going to kick a girl out because she didn't want to use a condom? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> he is now on the commissioner's exempt list after being arrested. Oh, Jesus Christ. As if things can't get worse for the team. What is going on in that secondary? I mean, at first, Jack Jones last year, and then I guess it wore off on Jabril Peppers a little bit. I don't want to take this as a sign that maybe things are going a little bit wrong in that locker room, but there are also reports of the players getting a little bit mad that Brissett was still starting uh, last week. So I I don't know. I don't know if Mayo was the right choice, honestly, but you cannot be clamoring for him to be fired right now. That's ridiculous next week is it going to be week six calm down everyone just needs to take a deep breath and calm down oh in that texans game uh josh allen was definitely concussed and went back in what is up with afc's quarterbacks and ignoring head trauma i don't get it okay what else do we have here anything else on twitter oh saints definitely are starting spencer rattler let's go Fuck yeah. Oh, let's go. Oh, the Dodgers announced their starting pitcher, and it is Ryan Brazier. Dude, you're going to throw a man bra out there to start for you in game, an elimination game? Game four of the NLDS, and you send out a man bra to start for you. What are the Dodgers doing? And then just an update on the Tigers-Guardians game. It is 3-0 Tigers in the middle of the eighth. So we got the Tigers coming up to bat here. And then in the Phillies mess game, it's still 0-0, top of the second. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see if the Phillies push it to game five. So, all right. I believe that's it. Uh, I don't think there was anything else I wanted to go over uh, for sports. Okay. I've been playing Astrobot. It is an amazing game, and it is quite the switch up from Wukong. Uh, I think this is going to be the game of the year, Astrobot is. It is PlayStation's answer to Mario on the Nintendo. This is such a fun game. I mean, it's excellent. Anyone can play it and have fun with it. I literally recommended it to my friend's son. <laughs> it is such a great game. It's colorful. It's it's vibrant. The uh, vibration in the controllers. There's great controller uh, motion tracking. It is an incredible game. 10 hours of story if you just go through it and beat every level without trying to get everything. I was on the Black Myth Wukong for Game of the Year train. But now I realize I'm like, oh, okay. This is how people felt when Elden Ring didn't win Game of the Year. I mean, <laughs> it's just a, it's a little bit too hard for the general public. I mean, I would love... To see it win game of the year. Yes, there's no doubt about that. But Astrobot is incredible. It's awesome. It reminds me of like a game that everyone was playing like back in high school. And everyone was like talking about it. And like, oh, did you beat this level yet? Did you find this on this level? And then all the real gamers are like, oh, yeah. Well, have you played Wukong yet? I bet you haven't. I bet you can't beat it. <laughs> That's It kind of gives off that kind of vibes. Like if you're rooting for it for game of the year having played both it's going to be astrobot okay but yeah i believe that is it and yeah we'll see how these playoff series go and hopefully there will be some good nlcs matchups next week uh make sure to leave a like and comment on each video and subscribe to our youtube channel hoagies and pierogies is available on spotify apple or wherever you listen to podcasts make sure to follow us on tiktok and instagram for clips throughout the week 
And we'll leave you with this. Uh, munch, 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 munch. Live from central Pennsylvania with your host, Ian DiCarlo, this is Hoagies and Pierogies. The ski stash! The ski stash! Welcome to the Big Ten. Beijers go with Drake, mate. Let's go! Let's <laughs> go!